everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms coming at you guys today at another how effective is whatever caliber we're talking about. And today we're talking about 12 gauge, specifically 12 gauge slugs. And I've got some BMP ammo here in front of us here. We've got some in the warehouse that I thought looked pretty good, some Italian made stuff that looks pretty high quality. And uh, we'll test some of it out at the range here in just a few. But we've got ourselves some high brass, some low brass, pretty much low recoil versus your standard, you know, traditional slug. Uh, this guy's coming in at about a one and one eighth ounce two and three quarter inch slug and then we've got a one ounce slug and this guy's coming in at about i want to say it was does it say on here yeah 1550 feet per second versus 1200 on this guy and i want to shoot these some but we're talking about how effective are slugs to a shotgun now typically when you think about a shotgun you don't think distance right uh, however I did see Hickok 45 years ago came out with a video of him shooting a one ounce slug through a smoothbore Benelli at a target 230 yards away. And he, as humble as he is, was over there saying, you know, I'm probably shooting all around this thing, but he was tearing that target apart. It looked like Swiss cheese by the end of it. And that t target he was shooting at looked to be about an inch and a half thick of like, I don't think it was drywall, but it looked like some sort of like, you know, fiberboard or something like that. Uh, but drywall is typically anywhere between, you know, three eighths inch to, you know, a half inch thick. And when you think about that, he was shooting at 230 yards and these things were just drilling right through that. Can you imagine a CQB or close quarters setting, uh, what a slug would do to your walls? Probably not the best home defense option uh, to throw it out there. So. I would feel comfortable, and of course I want to hear from you guys down in the comments section, I would feel comfortable saying that your slugs are definitely probably your go-to shotgun ammunition choice for any targets within an excess of 50 yards to maybe just under 300 yards. I think I could say that, maybe. We'll test it here in just a little bit, see if uh, see what we can do out there at the range. But uh, yeah, I am pretty excited to go shoot these guys out. And we're gonna try them through all sorts of different shotguns too. We're gonna try them through a pump action, we're gonna try them through a semi-auto, and we're also gonna try them through a slug gun and actually try to get you know some of these guys to their full potential. Pretty cool stuff. Now, like I said here, BMP has their three gun slugs, which pretty much is just reduced recoil. And you can typically tell what kind of recoil to expect by looking at the low brass versus high brass. Think of it this more, less of a charge in here, more of a charge. Less recoil, more recoil. That's pretty much a standard thought process when looking at, you know, shotgun ammunition. And whenever you hear the terms used, low brass versus high brass and so on, uh, that's pretty much what you can expect. If I'm missing something there, of course, hey, you guys let me know down in the comments, but I think I'm pretty hitting the nail on the head on that one. Uh, anyway, so like I said, we've got two different types of slugs I want to go shoot and three different types of shotguns I want to go shoot. So let's head to the range and let's go shoot some slugs. All right, out here I take aim training and range now, and guys, I'm running some of the three-gun low brass through my 870 here. Something else that you might not know too is your low brass sometimes might not cycle in semi-autos. You gotta keep that in mind if they don't have enough oomph behind them to actually cycle the action. So they're great definitely for a pump shotgun here. Let's see uh, Let's see how Mr. Hanslack likes a slug, all right? Let's take a look and see. All right, let's go take a look at them. Just a couple of shots to them here. And you might have noticed too that the recoil on these guys, it's minimal. I've got an entire bag back here full of the uh, standard loads that are shooting at about 1500 feet per second. Woo. <laughs> All right, so yeah, they are blowing some holes clean through Mr. Hand Select here. And I don't know if you guys remember a while back, we had a wad actually get stuck in him. Let's see if I can pull this out. <laughs> that's pretty funny. So that's not from today, I painted over that one. But anyway, so yeah, these guys are leaving some pretty big holes on them here. As far as the exit wounds, he actually looks pretty rough back here from all of the other calibers that we have shot through them. And we have shot Mr. Hand Select here with a 50 cal. And I gotta tell you guys, the 12 gauge slugs are taking up a lot more surface area than the actual 50 is. And I can't remember exactly which one it was that shot the 50 cal through them, uh, but he, uh, he survived and he did just fine. The slugs are actually doing more damage. Let's take a look at what one of these 
higher velocities ones here. Now, as far as damage on Mr. Hanslack goes, you probably won't notice as much, uh, but as far as me feeling the recoil, yeah, I'll definitely feel it a little bit more. And I don't know if for you guys you can tell or not, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna load one really quick. That is a uh, three gun low recoil. And I'm gonna try a standard right after it. So just two back to back really quick. Let's just see. Yeah, you can definitely tell the difference, or at least I can feel the difference. How about on the still target? Let's back up just a little bit here. Let's try one of the slower velocity, 1200 feet per second on the still target, and then switch it on over to the high velocity. Let's just see if we get much of a difference here, all right? Hopefully our target makes it here. I'm actually not worried about the target, I'm worried about the stand, the two by four, let's see. Uh, stay with me. All right, now let's try that higher velocity. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, all right, so that one, the higher velocity, I did hit a little bit closer to the shoulder, so naturally the inertia of it throwing off kilter is gonna take it down a little bit more. But as far as impact goes on these AR500 steel targets, I doubt we're gonna see much difference between the two. But since I'm here, may as well go ahead and take a look anyway, right? All right, let's see. So, this was from the low recoil over here, was from the standard higher recoil. I don't think it's that much of a difference. I saw we shoot it again, how about that? Why not shoot it again? All right, got it set up there. Stay with me, target. This is the part I'm worried about. All of the uh, shrapnel coming down and then hitting the bottom of the two by four. I don't know how much life that two by four has got left. <laughs> That's all right. So let's go with one of the low recoil again here. And then one of the high velocity right behind it. Let's do it again here. Center mass. Yep. Oh, <laughs> well, that's all right. Let's just go for Mr. Hand Select again since he's right here and I've got the high velocity in here. Ooh, ooh, right in the eye, ouch. Ah, gave him a black eye, how about that? So yeah, those slugs guys are doing some serious damage for sure. Heck of a lot of fun. Now let's go ahead, let's do a quick cut here. Let's grab that salient semi-auto and let's have some fun with high brass on that guy. All right, now something that should be pretty cool here, guys. I've got actually some Wolf rifled slugs, and these are also full power. These should be one and one eighth ounce. Yes, uh, two and three quarter inch. And these guys are moving at about 1,400 feet per second. The BMP is moving at about 1,500 feet per second. And I've got this guy loaded up here to try out, and the last two rounds that I have in it are actually the low brass. And you'll see how this guy right here. I don't expect is actually gonna cycle with it. You got a lot of gas escaping out here, um, and I just don't think it's gonna have enough oomph behind it to cycle this action. But let's go ahead and let's give it a couple of shots with those rifled slugs. And the purpose behind a rifled slug is if you have a smooth bore barrel like this one here, what'll happen is it'll give it itself its own rifling and start that spin and hopefully accurate, accurize and stabilize the round down range. Well, not hopefully, that's what it does. Let's give it a shot real quick. Let's go for Mr. Hand Select again. All right, that's five, that should be the wolf. Let's see if uh, those low brass are what's up next. Yep, notice how it didn't have enough power to cycle it and all it did was jump. So if I hit it again, all, all we're gonna hear is a click. All right, so let's go ahead and cycle it. It picked up the next low brass. There you go, and you can definitely feel the recoil difference for sure, one more. There we go. All right, so it definitely feels good. Now those rifled slugs, they feel pretty good too. They're not moving as fast as the BMP traditional, about 100 feet per second lower or less, but still guys, it's easy to shoot and it's a heck of fun. Let's go check it out really quick. Let's see how Mr. Hand Select's doing. He's getting some big holes going through him here. You know what? There we go, that's always fun to do. <laughs> oh yeah. So as you guys can see, we just got some serious carnage going through here and it's just ripping him up. Oh uh, yeah. Oh wait, hold on, take a look at this one. We got, looks like, Ryan, if you come around back, you'll see where it looks like the wad has <laughs> actually didn't go all the way through here. That's pretty neat. Pretty cool stuff. And you start to see daylight all the way through here. As you can see, Mr. Hanslecht has taken a beating since we've had him. He's been a good sport though, haven't you, buddy? All right, 
Now let's check out this high brass. Let's see how many rounds I can get on target before this thing just completely falls off. And then uh, after that, we might head to the rifle range and try out that slug gun. I'm pretty excited to try that out and uh, do a little bit of distance with it. We'll see. We'll see how far we can get out with it. But anyway, let's load this guy up. Let's just see if I can shoot it as quick as possible. Like I said before, that should be the last one, I think, before the target just uh, falls over. Yep. All right. Let's give it a shot here. <laughs> so, like I said, um, the two by four didn't survive. <laughs> so, all my shots, I do believe, were on target. I don't think I accident, like, actually hit low. I think just all of that shrapnel coming off this guy, yeah, you can see all the impact here. Uh, all of that shrapnel just uh, completely destroyed it, and that's really all there is to it. Should have a few left in here. Oh, I got one left. Yeah, yeah so you know what that means, right? All right, Mr. Hand Select. Let's do it. Woo. Man. Slugs are some nasty beasts, guys. They are fun, 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 fun. Oh, yeah. Hang in there, champ. You're doing a good job. All right, let's head to the rifle range. Let's grab some fun over there. So now we're out here, guys, with the Harrington and Richardson single shot rifled slug gun. And uh, this thing is a bull barrel. I mean, just look at, look at that. <laughs> This thing is thick. It is a single shot 12 gauge. Yes, that is a 12 gauge. It looks massive and it is rifled in here. So that eliminates the need for rifled slugs. So I've got some of our BNP traditional slugs. I've got a target about 75 yards out. Let's take a shot here really quick with it. And let's just see. Let's just see if I can go for the head. How about it? All right. Perfect shot. All right, let's go ahead. Let's maybe do another one of those. Why not? Here's one of the uh, low re recoils. Let's just see how that one does. Let's go for center mass on that one. So a little to the left on that one. So what's funny too is noticing the difference between that low recoil or the high brass, low brass here that you see. And uh, let's see, I've got one more high brass here. Let's go ahead and take another shot with them. Oh yeah, easy day. That is good. And again, that's 75 yards. And because of the rifling with this here, I know I could reach in all sorts of excess on it. No big deal, but let's go take a look at the target. So I think uh, the scope on Ben's rifle here, and yeah, this is Ben's, and I'm calling it a rifle because it's got rifling, right? Rifled slug gun. Uh, ben, I think you need to adjust it to the right just a little bit, all right? Anyway, yeah, we'll blame it on Ben's, uh, Ben's scope here. But anyway, guys, notice we've got the two high velocity impacts here, the low velocity right over here. And one thing I thought was kind of cool on the opposite side over here is it looked like the wad grazed the head right here. There's no impact, no damage what here, but it looks like maybe the wad just hit it. Pretty cool stuff, right? So what's neat though is if I had the capabilities today, uh, we could probably run this thing out for several hundred yards and be accurate with it. And again, you don't need rifled slugs if you've got a rifled slug gun. If you do have a smoothbore gun and you want that accuracy out of it, check out the rifled slug options like we have by Wolf. Pretty cool stuff, right? All right, pretty fun video, guys. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. What's the longest distance you've engaged a target with a slug, a 12 gauge slug, 20, 10 gauge. Whew, they're out there. I think there's even an eight gauge out there if you're really feeling like you just wanna hurt tomorrow. Anyway, uh, let me know again down in the comments. Last thing I wanna talk to you guys about is our current giveaway and I've got it right here. This is the salient tier one G19-21 and this thing is cool. It's coming with two 15 round P mags, coming with that Trijicon RMR and that Surefire X300 light. This thing is a lot of fun, guys. And if you want to see me miss a couple of targets with it, go check out our video unveiling this as our current giveaway. It's a heck of a lot of fun. Oh man, it shoots so good. And uh, code word for this guy, it's got a titanium nitrated barrel. The uh, abbreviation for that is TIN. 
That's your code abbreviation. Go put that in at classicfirearms.com. Hit that top banner. It's going to take you to a web page that shows you all these different links and different ways to get your entries. One of those ways is entering that code word, T-I-N, for those extra entries. Refer your friends. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.